kid pushed, even as his character was maligned. He pushed, even as his family's life was threatened. He pushed, even as his own life was in jeopardy. He pushed for racial justice, for economic justice, and for the freedom that unlocks all others, the freedom to vote. You don't need to love, it's not hard to love someone you like. Anyone can do that. But to love the unlovable, to fight on the side of the unlovable from those who may be different by faith, by status, by upbringing, may we also take hold of the hope amongst all our traditions, of the call and the charge for justice as we even heard in our Quran reading this day, and be the beloved community as we all shift and align. So happy Martin Luther King Day. I'm in Atlanta, which is where Martin Luther King's birthplace is. So I decided that I was gonna go for a little walk to see his birthplace since it's really close to where I'm staying. And I stayed in Atlanta uh, for a dance event, but I stayed the extra day on Monday because I thought that there would be opportunities to participate in Martin Luther King Day of Service. Um, but I think a lot of them got canceled because of COVID, so I decided to go for a nice walk. It's very cold here, and I'm gonna go see his house and look at all the nice murals on the way there. When a baby is born, you never really know who they're gonna turn out to be. And there was something really powerful about being in this space at the time of what would have been Dr. King's 91st birthday. It was a cloudy and cold and gray morning. Maybe that's pretty typical for January in Atlanta. And it had me wonder, what was it like the morning that he was born? And then it further had me wonder, who is being born today that's going to have an impact of tomorrow? And what the future holds? What sort of great people are still coming our way? that can learn from Dr. King and also can benefit from his life and his legacy. And that made me feel really hopeful. This is way more than just his house. I'm at the National. I'm at the National Historical Park, the Martin Luther King Jr. National Historical Park, um, and his tomb is here. And his wife, Greta Scott King, her tomb is here as well. And there's a lot of different spaces to contemplate peace and nonviolence, and it's really beautiful and way more than I expected. And I'm really enjoying it. There were a few major takeaways from the King Center that we can thank Coretta Scott King for. Shortly after his death, she began working on this center to honor his legacy and to keep pushing forward with dreams of extending King's spirit and his philosophy of nonviolence and love in action. She did this with a goal to teach methodologies and strategies of nonviolence in the hope of bringing about social change and eliminating what he called the triple evils of society poverty, racism, and war. 
Here is where I learned the idea about the beloved community. According to the center, the beloved community is a realistic vision of an achievable society, one in which problems and conflict exist, but are resolved peacefully and without bitterness. In the beloved community, caring and compassion drive political policies that support the worldwide elimination of poverty and hunger in all forms of bigotry and violence. The beloved community is a state of heart and mind, a spirit of hope and goodwill that transcends all boundaries and barriers and embraces all creation. At its core, the beloved community is an engine of reconciliation. This way of living seems a long way from the kind of world we have now, but I do believe it is a goal that can be accomplished through courage and determination and through education and training, if enough people are willing to make the necessary commitment. Dr. King's philosophy of nonviolence is described in his first book, Stride Toward Freedom, and the King Center says that these principles should be embraced as a lifestyle. The first principle is, nonviolence is a way of life for courageous people. It is an active, nonviolent resistance to evil. It is aggressive spiritually, mentally, and emotionally. Principle two, is that nonviolence seeks to win friendship and understanding. The end result of nonviolence is redemption and reconciliation. The purpose of nonviolence is the creation of the beloved community. Principle three is that nonviolence seeks to defeat injustice and not people. Nonviolence recognizes that evildoers are also victims and are not evil people. The nonviolent resistor seeks to defeat evil, not people. Principle four is that nonviolence holds that suffering can educate and transform people and societies. Nonviolence accepts suffering without retaliation. Unearned suffering is redemptive and it has tremendous, edu tremendous educational and transforming possibilities. Principle five, nonviolence chooses love instead of hate. Nonviolence resists violence of the spirit as well as the body. Nonviolent love is spontaneous, unmotivated, unselfish, and creative. And principle six is that nonviolence believes that the universe is on the side of justice. The nonviolent resistor has deep faith that justice will eventually win. Nonviolence believes that God is a God of justice. Well, that was really cool. I saw some of the outside of Dr. King's house and his tomb and a lot of people that were out to learn about his life and his legacy and to participate in an active choice of trying to make the world a nonviolent and peaceful place. And I exchanged a lot of kind smiles with people and I met some cool photographers and it was all really great and I feel really thankful to get to, to get to be here today, to get to sort of take this field trip uh, and that it all kind of worked out by chance that I got to stay right by Dr. King's house, right on Martin Luther King Day. So I um, have yet to find some hot food, that's what I'm looking for next because it is very cold. Well, it's like 6.30 in the morning, it's still dark out, the moon is bright, and I'm on my way to catch the light rail to the train station, to the plane station, that's where I'm going, across the street in this direction, I'm going to the airport fly back to New Orleans, which seems like a whole different world from Atlanta. I've definitely had a lot of culture shock being in Atlanta. First of all, the snow. And second of all, it's just a really beautiful city. A lot more modern architecture in the area that I'm in. 
and had a really nice time hanging out with some friends. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. New videos every Sunday and snippets every Wednesday. Freedom rings. When we let it ring from every citizen, every hamlet, from every state and every city, we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing in the world Oh, my God.